sometimes people tend to say, oh, this is the begin for the beginner. The Four Noble Truths is very simple for the beginner. You know, the, I have been practicing Buddha Dharma last, you know, saying last 10 years or 20 years, uh, you know, I need more thicker books or, you know, more, you know, the advanced books or more advanced practices. Mm -hmm. That's a little bit, you know, the misleading to yourself. You know, this subject, the Four Noble Truths, yes, you know, the, it is quite straightforward, but it has a very, very profound meaning. You know, the profound meaning, what we are, how we are, what we are experiencing, what is going on you know, the, in our present lives, and what, what is the alternative. You know, the, and how to, how, to ex, uh, how to achieve or how to experience that alternative very, very useful subject, useful subject. You know, the, um, in this small booklet, uh, with the result of His Holiness Dalai Lama's talk on uh, Four Noble Truths, some, you know, I think 1998 or 1997 or 1998, uh, given, he gave that teaching in, um, uh, in London, Barbican, Bar Barbican uh, I think there, and uh, there is a passage. If I get it, he explains how how in, how useful it is that understanding of the four noble truths for going for refuge, uh, going for refuge. Uh, I'm a very very disorganized person. Uh, you know, I have many. Uh, what you call the marks and the things, but uh, quite often when I need it, I don't get it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> yes. Mm. So this is here. I'll read uh, this uh, paragraph. Uh, not that that long, I'll read that paragraph. Mm. Unless we have a good uh, foundation, foundational experience of the practice of taking refuge, in the three jewels, will not be able to have a high level of realization of bodhicitta. That's it. Yeah. Uh, it is for this reason that the distinction between a practicing Buddhist and a non-Buddhist is made uh, on the basis of whether or whether or not an individual has taken refuge in three jewels. However, when we talk about taking refuge in the three jewels, we should not, we should not imagine that uh, it simply involves a ceremony, a ceremony in which we formally uh, take refuge from a master, or that merely by uh, virtues of participating in such a ceremony, we have become a Buddhist. There is a formal refuge ceremony in Buddhism, but ceremony is not the point. The point is that, uh, point is that as a result of your own reflection, even without a master, you become fully convinced of a validity of the Buddha, Dharma, and the Sangha, as a true ultimate object of refuge. And that is when you actually become a Buddhist. So that is here I was talking about 
earlier, the cause. The causes, there are two causes. Causes going for refuge. Here, His Holiness is pointing uh, out the second cause. Second cause. And the second cause is understanding the Buddha, Dharma, and the Sangha. And here, he said this very clearly, isn't it? The point is that as a result uh, of your own reflection, reflection, understanding, you know, the contemplation, reflection, even without a master, you become fully convinced of the validity of the Buddha, Dharma, and the Sangha as the true ultimate object of refuge. So when, you, when we have the understanding of the Buddha, what is Buddha? You know that. When we are understanding of the, what is Dharma, the Dharma, and when we have understanding of the Sangha, and through that understanding, when we see the value, when we see the qualities, when we see the benefits, you know, the, having these three, then, you know, going for refuge, the mind going for refuge will cultivate, will, will, will come. Without joining a ceremony, without going to a big monastery or a big, you know, some kind of, you know, the religious place. And that is the, uh, the, the point His Holiness is making here. Hmm? You entrust your spiritual well-being uh, to the Three Jewels. And this is what is really meant by taking refuge. On, uh, on the other hand, if there is any doubt or apprehension in, uh, apprehension in your mind about the validity of Buddha, Dharma and Sangha as, uh, as being the ultimate refuge, of, of, uh, ultimate objects of refuge, even though you may have taken part in a refuge ceremony, that uh, very uh, suspicions or doubt prevents you from being a practicing Buddhist. At least, yeah, for, uh, the, so that is the one part which, uh, uh, you know, the, uh, I want to read this. Uh, now the first part, the first part of the out of two courses, which I want to explain the first uh, course, the nature, the nature Understanding, understanding the nature of our existence, our existence. That understanding will lead us, lead us or make us search for, you know, the, what, you know, the, when we understand the fully, completely, the full nature, complete nature of our uh, present existence, then that will, you know, the, uh, lead us search for refuge. You know, that's here the importance. Mm? Now, what is what is, you know, what what is the nature of this uh, our present existence? There's no doubt. There's no doubt. You know the in this existence, existence that we have, human existence, human body, you know, the, and uh, uh, human environment or the culture, society that we live. There's no doubt there are so many uh, enjoyments, there are so many, you know, the uh, fulfillments, there are so many, you know, the good things, you know, the happiness, fulfillment, joy, and so on and so forth. And that is, you know, the, we should not, uh, you know, the denial, uh, denied, we should not, you know, the, uh, what's called, the, you know, the, uh, ignore, uh, acknowledge that exist you know within within this existence there are so many joys
happiness, fulfillment. At the same time, at the same time, on the you know, the, at the same token, you know, the, this life, life that we have, is also not perfect. It's not perfect, and that is really something important understanding. You know, in that context, what I want to do, I want to read uh, from this book. Book. This book is. Um, you know, the, this book is written by a great uh, Theravadan master, uh, Walpole Rahula, a Sri Lankan monk. A very, very nice uh, book. And uh, here he put on the basis of, uh, on, on, the, on, the base, on the basis, uh, uh, on you know, the, one of the Buddhist teachings, he gave this. And I thought this is very relevant. And this point is very relevant to uh, the topic that point that I'm you know, trying to make. Uh, he said this, Buddha, in this case the historical Buddha, the Buddha was realistic and objective. He says, with regard to life and the enjoyment of sense pleasures, that one should clearly understand three things. So the, this is very nice. He said, you know, the, um, Buddha says, with regard to, regard to life and the enjoyment of sense pleasures that we have, pleasures, that we should clearly understand three things. The first, out of three, the first, attraction or enjoyment, you know, that we have with the sense, with, you know, the, with the sense pleasures. You know, in the sense, uh, within the sense pleasures, there's attraction, there's also, or enjoyment, you know, that we can, you know. The second, the term he used, you know, the, uh, evil consequences. I'm not that happy with that word he used, evil, but I would, instead of evil, I would use difficult consequences or, you know, the, you know, painful consequences or, you know, the unsatisfactoriness that he used. Unsatisfactoriness. And the third, freedom, or liberation. So these three, these three, attraction or enjoyment, or we use enjoyment. The second is, you know, unsatisfactoriness. And third is freedom or liberation. So these three, these three are coexist within ourselves, right here and now. Every single, every single event that we do, every single object that we have, you know, the, including the life itself, you know, the, has these three features. These three features. There's enjoyment, same time, there's a pain. Same time, there's a liberation from the pain. Here I'm not saying, you know, while we are enjoying this beautiful bunch of flower, I'm not saying same time we have a pain. You know, this beautiful flower that we are looking at, you know, the, it produces at the moment, you know, the sense of joy looking at this beautiful flower. The same, this beautiful flower, you know, can produce dissatisfactoriness or the pain. 